In this video, I'm going to tell you the most powerful setting in the Moza Pit House software and the setting that will allow you to get your force feedback to feel exactly how you want it to feel. I don't know why this isn't talked about more, but uh, at the end of this video, you will understand the most powerful setting and how you can use the most powerful setting to get the force feedback that you like. Make sure to subscribe so you can unsubscribe when you disagree with us. Thank you to everyone that's clicked the like button. On with the video. So, on the screen here, you can see we have the glorious Moza Pit House software. Software that sometimes doesn't load up properly if you happen to move it onto another window. So, keep it on a single window and that stops that annoying issue from happening. In the Moza Pit House software, you can obviously see we've got the KS wheel and we're using the Moza R12 at the moment. Uh, we've used this for about a thousand hours. Absolutely fantastic wheelbase. And I love this KS wheel rim. We'll do a separate video on that. Really good value for money. Bloody fantastic wheel rim. But the most powerful setting, what you need to do is you go into your motor settings and you can see here you've got basic, advanced, force feedback equalizer, force feedback curve and miscellaneous the most powerful the most powerful setting is to be found in the ffb effects equalizer now what this does is it acts like an eq an equalizer funny that because that's what it's called on the force feedback that's coming out of the game and then how it goes through the wheel how it feels on the wheel now the key thing to be aware of with force feedback is that when it comes to feeling what tyres are doing and the loading of grip, grip coming and going, those are all really low frequency forces that actually happen at around about 0 to 5 hertz. Unfortunately, you can't change any of that with this software. I don't know why. But that is where the crucial component of force feedback is. Uh, weirdly, people get obsessed with high frequency force feedback and a whole bunch of other stuff where really they should be obsessed with sims outputting really good range of force feedback in those low frequencies. That's beside the point. What you want to know, though, is how to actually make your force feedback feel really nice and how this force feedback equalizer lets you achieve that. Well, what you can basically do with this force feedback equalizer is you can remove high end, high frequency force feedback from the wheel. So what does that actually mean in terms of feel? Well, high frequency forces at 100 hertz are basically those type of forces that feel like grainy sandpaper or like a toothbrush <laughs> vibrating in your hand. 100 hertz is like... 60 hertz is like... 40 hertz is like... 25 hertz is like... You know, so that gives you an idea of what those forces feel like. The result is... If you remove 100 hertz, and we're not, we're still getting all these forces here, and we just removed the absolute top here, 100 hertz, you have now removed the stupid, overly noisy, unrealistic, super high frequency grainy stuff from the force feedback. Some people might like how that feels, but uh, I've never driven any real wheel car that has those kind of forces through the wheel, and I find it feels a bit weird. Now, what you'll also find is if you reduce the 60 hertz as well, this will then again remove some of the higher frequency uh, vibrations and in many cases noise from the force feedback so what you can do with this is you can have no you don't need any uh, damper uh, any other filters any inertia or anything else you can just isolate or remove the annoying parts of the force feedback or force feedback that doesn't actually tell you what the vehicle's doing and you can control it to quite a high degree so that you can then make it feel like you're driving a car that has rubbery wheels and is going through a steering rack whilst still feeling all the pertinent details keep in mind even if you have this sort of setting this is this is pretty close to how i have stuff with just most simulators even if you have this set up like this you're still going to be able to hit, feel all curbing and track bumps because those are all happening at like 40 hertz. But when they're coming through the wheel, they're, they're not super duper toothbrush vibrations. Um, 
you will find in some sims if you do cap off some of the or you remove some of the high frequency you might lose some details that might give you some information as to what's going on but you know you can have the sim open and you can move these up and down whilst you drive to feel exactly what they do uh but for the most part if you set it up a bit like this zero for a hundred 30 50 for 60 uh, for 60 hertz maybe even a little bit down on the 40 hertz uh you set it up like that and uh bob's your uncle fan is your aunt you'll f you'll find that your games will feel super nice and the force feedback will feel really nice and smooth detailed and you'll get realistic jolts and bumps also what's really good with using this as well is if you play stuff like le mans ultimate and r factor 2 which has a habit of quite a, giving quite a noisy high frequency graininess to the force feedback it does depend what wheelbase you're using but generally that sim can give quite a lot of superfluous noise through its force feedback you'll find that rather than using the in-game smoothing filter which smooths everything coming out of the game and actually removes uh, quite a reasonable amount of detail uh, instead of using that turn all the in-game filtering off and just use this to filter the final force feedback signal through your wheel and you can control it really nice and precisely so you have to give massive credit to Moser, to be honest, for allowing this <laughs> this type of EQ. It is a shame that you can't EQ zip from zero here. Now, you could argue, well, you just move everything down and then that's increased that. But uh, it, it doesn't really quite operate like that. And normally I'm running this wheel at near 100% force anyway. So you can't magnify stuff more than what its maximum potential of putting out is. But... Uh, as a way to think of this as more of like a, a way to cut force feedback off um, or cut noise out, this is really, really good. And it, it's super analogous. Force feedback is really analogous to audio. It's cutting off this. So in, in audio, let's say you had a really annoying high pitch like in the, in the, in the audio, well, you could just cut off 20,000 hertz or just below it cut that and then well that's not going to come through the signal and you didn't need to hear it anyway so uh that's a bit what this operates like it's absolutely absolutely fantastic now you might seeing as we're in this video but keep it keep in mind this this here the force feedback effects equalizer is the most powerful setting you might want to think about some other settings as well or think why you shouldn't use them so you have this force base force feedback curve which you can adjust which again will shape and adjust the force feedback coming from the game but the problem with this is if you adjust this you will start to get really wonky behavior from the force feedback of the game the game will be putting out what it puts out and then your wheels doing all this weirdness with it and uh you can't like this is really getting into stupid dangerous territory and you probably mess things up so don't mess with this but let's say you had a simulator where the vi the wheel felt su super super vague in the in the middle like the initial turn of the wheel it felt like there was no force feedback initially and you wanted force feedback sooner what you can do is you can adjust this up a little bit and that will make the force feedback kick in sooner but the downside of that is it's going to have to return back at some point so i mean you can then adjust everything you you just end up creating a bit of a nightmare for yourself so i would well, mess around with it whilst you're playing and see what you like 100 percent do that but that, that, that's the biggest tip i'd say for everything actually just mess around with things and understand how stuff works don't just follow guides but i'm saying if you do if you are just following a guide and you're not really i'll just be don't fiddle with this if you're just following guides but do fiddle mess around with it whilst you're playing to see what it does that's how you learn that's how i learn how to do stuff but generally speaking i would not mess with this base force feedback curve because it will really start to screw up with the linearity and what's coming out of the simulator so uh yeah probably best to leave it but this force feedback equalizer moving this down and this down here it's kind of like if you if you had like a Fanatec wheel and you put uh, like the NDP bit of filter on, uh, the FEI setting on, or if you've got other wheel bases and you put a bit of filter on to remove those high frequency things, it's a bit like that, but with really nice control over it. Um, and I, as I say, pretty much all sims, I will put this down here. If I feel like it's too grainy and noisy, I'll just put this down and it'll be super, super smooth, feel really nice, loads of detail. And I, I really love this about the Moser wheel. 
and the most software. I know there's, uh, there'll be other software that does similar things to this as well, but uh, this this hopefully is useful for those of you with the uh, Moza wheel. Uh, miscellaneous settings, though, um, just to go through the settings quickly, we have actually done a setup guard on this. Um, a thing to uh, also set is on the with an R12, maybe not if you're using an R5 or some of the weaker wheels, the temperature control strategy, uh, set that to radical because <laughs> uh, the, uh, the the temperature's at 60 degrees is fine for a servo motor. So you might as well put it on radical and not conservative. And then um, other stuff bit worth being aware of, if you're driving vintage cars with quite a heavy wheel rim, like one of the circular wheel rims, you might um, you might want to add a bit of damper to them if the wheel's really overactive with certain simulators. So if the wheel's like sort of thrown itself out in a crazy way and is let's say overactive, then uh, then you might want to add a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, damper. So you just increase wheel damper, and then you can also then adjust uh, some like speed dependent damping or natural inertia. If things are overactive but to be honest with a lot of the sims now uh, i i literally for me i i tend to leave things not particularly dampened i'd rather run a bit lower force feedback strength in the game and uh, then just remove these high frequency things and i like to feel everything that's coming through the game it's only really when you start getting to 12 newton meters or or higher newton meter wheelbases that the damping may um it is a much bigger thing to consider or to put on because the higher newton meter wheels can get very crazy <laughs> and the damper the damping's not going to um affect the detail so much because they've got so much overhead in the range that they can put out uh so if you're on a really low end or really low end still they're still quite good wheels but if you're on a five newton meter or less wheelbase you you really probably don't want any damper at all and as i say even with this wheelbase i don't don't really use it but there you go the most powerful setting in the moser software the force feedback equalizer remove this top end or reduce it fiddle around with it and uh, trust me this will make your sims feel a lot more rubbery a lot nicer a lot less uh, toyish you'll have a good time so uh, hopefully this video was useful for you guys. I'm sure people that don't have Moser wheels are not going to be interested in this. <laughs> but the same logic and reasoning applies to everything. So there should be. But uh, until the next one, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Happy tea drinking. And goodbye.